So I've heard about this incredible diabetic drug, semaglutide, for years now. It was brought to my attention by my wife, but I didn't give it much thought as it sounded too good to be true, and that it was facing shortage due to recreational use. Now, I should have listened to Peter Lynch when he said that someone's best idea was brought to him by his wife, and in hindsight, I should have gone all in. Now, my issue in a lot of these companies is valuation. As these pop, I'm naturally averse to owning it, as I fear I'm overpaying. As such, I tend to go towards things that are out of season, buy when others are fearful mantra. If you fast forward a little bit, Semaglutide is a real deal with Ozambique, Wegovy, and Ribolus. It works by tackling the GLP-1 receptor by increasing insulin production and reducing the rate of food intake, um, making you full for longer. Eli Lilly's Trizipatite, where it tackles both the GLP-1, like Semaglutide, along with GIP, which caused the pancreas to also produce more insulin, uh, thus has an enhanced result in lowering blood sugar uh, and weight loss. These two companies have done well and their stock has been on a tear in the past two years as it continues to seize opportunities. So are there still opportunities in this space? Aside from lowering glucose levels, another important metric is, to, is weight loss. In particular, weight loss through fast and not muscle loss. The reason is that people on this medication are likely not active. Hence, if you lose too much muscle, it could be problematic down the line especially if you're older. Now, from the above, semi-glutide provide, uh, produce a weight loss of about 15% in, in about one year, of which one-third is from muscle mass. In trizipatite, losing 15% takes about 20 to 24 weeks, of which is approximately 25% muscle loss, which claims to be similar to someone on weight loss and exercise programs. Here on the announcement too, trizipatite is a better medication from a weight loss perspective as preserved more muscle mass. On a separate note, the, uh, Eli Lilly, the owner of trizipatite, acquired Versanis, a biotech firm that hopes to further improve uh, muscle preservation that's also in clinical trials. Now, if we compare to what was in the trials at the moment, that's not from Norbert Dordis uh, or Eli Lilly, I would see that, uh, that there are two key drugs on the pipeline, while call Pemivutide by Altimune and VK2735 by Vacuum Therapeutics that are more or less pure place in this uh, weight loss space. Pemivutide works the same way as Trisipatide and is a result from clinical trials shows uh, very similar results. VK2375 is a glucokinase activator. It is an enzyme that plays a key role in glucose metabolism. This allows a better uptake in the pancreas and liver cells. The result thus far is a faster weight loss than what's currently in the market. On its phase two trials, it stated that people lost up to about 15% within 13 weeks, um, while it took Wegovy uh, about one year to see similar results. We'll have to wait until June 2024 when the full results will be reviewed to see what the impact on muscle loss will be, but it's very exciting. So Eli Lilly and Novo Scordis are the first to market and will continue to ride the wave. Diabetes is about a $100 billion annual uh, market, while weight loss about $140 billion-ish, meaning that the addressable market is roughly around $250 billion per annum with two key players. The acquisition and trials are indicating that the drug can be do better in the future. The problem is production of the drugs. It is in shortage. Though interestingly, some insurance in the U.S. are dropping coverage, which may aid overall supply and demand, along with give opportunities for newcomers that can produce cheaper alternatives. This is where Altimune and Viking comes in. The issue with these two is that they are an almost pure R&D play with no resources to produce at a market. Luckily for them, Roche, Pfizer, and the sorts has not had much success uh, and in producing alternatives. Pfizer, for example, has a drug in trial, but had huge dropout rates and stronger side effects. They say they'll continue to trial it with one dose instead of two to see if it can continue to produce an alternative. That means uh, Altimune and Viking could stop sign licensing deals or be bought out by one of the large pharmaceutical companies, similar to AstraZeneca part partnering with a Chinese company to develop a weight loss drug uh, that's using a similar tech uh, as the ones above. I think a lot of Euphoria is priced in for Nordis at $550 billion and Eli Lilly at $700 billion market cap. 
It will be interesting to see the result of the trial by Eli Lilly in reducing mu muscle loss going forward. As for the two pure play, Altimune and Viking, a lot depend on how phase 3 of the trial performs along with how others are performing in the market. Altimune can likely uh, license Pemavutite or be bought out, though at the present it feels like the, at best it would be similar to Trizipatite, and with Eli Lilly taking steps to further improve their drug, they may be left behind. Even if the Eli Lilly failed, Altimune will need to undercut and do a lot more to compete with the first mover advantage, which means the windfall for a licensing or buyout will be lower, which probably explains the lower value assigned to it. Now, Vacuum Therapeutics is one of um, one that's much more exciting. So far, the results from the Phase 2 trial is amazing for weight loss, and with uh, what is approved with similar tech, we can expect that the drug will have some market. The report in June on muscle loss will likely be a key indicator as well as to see if it can become the potentially new GOAT standard. It will also be reporting in a few weeks, so it will be interesting to see what they have to say. They said the company's now valued at around $7 billion, which means the market is very excited about it as well. It did raise a roughly around $600 million in its sale in its share sale in March after the stock popped at $85 a share. They plan to, to use the proceeds to fund Phase 3 as well as R&D. It makes sense as it put the company in a better footing financially in both funding trials and waiting to see how others perform in the market. And exactly things I would do if I was management. The issue about muscle loss is not getting much attention as a shortage coming from recreational use of the drug for people wanting to lose a few pounds here and there. The issue is medical conditions down the line, but for those that are obese and, and diabetic, the current benefits outweighs the potential uh, negatives in the future. And don't get me wrong, I think these stocks are actually high, relatively high risk investments and as value investors, we value certainty, so it wouldn't really be in our portfolio. However, I keep thinking of what Ted Weschler said on the Vita. And let's listen in. I think that the broad filters that I apply for healthcare investing in general is, um, number one, does a healthcare company deliver better quality of care than somebody could get anywhere else? And the Vita falls into that. Number two, do you, does it deliver a net savings to the healthcare system? In other words, is the total bill for U.S. healthcare cheaper because of the efficiency that the company provides? The Vita checks that box. And lastly, do you get a high return on capital, predictable growth, uh, and you know, shareholder-friendly management? Absolutely. And all three of those together, you know, you've got healthcare is whatever, 17, 18% of GDP. All right. So on weight loss drugs, the better medication, um, the medication being delivered today does give a better quality of health than the alternative that we have today. It will all save the medical system money as obesity leads to a range of the diseases. And if people can get their weight under control, it will also help the medical system itself, especially if we solve the muscle preservation issue. On a capital allocation and management front, I think what Viking Eli DD is doing is right. It is, doing, it, it is things that I'll be doing. Eli Lady, for example, is trying to make the drugs better, while Viking is still in the early process or uh, innings at the moment on how they will use cash. Should Viking succeed, it will be interesting to see what they can do with the cash. Though my guess is if phase three does well and Pfizer and the source still do not have a good candidate, it is likely a bio candidate. In terms of valuations, diabetes and weight loss uh, brought in roughly six billion dollars in sales for Novosortis. Uh, Eli Lilly's drug brought in $1.4 billion in sales in a quarter. So adding together, Novosortis said it expects um, its sales to continue to grow around 26% a year, which means that these two companies will bring in roughly $40 billion in sales a year. The margins are roughly around 36%, which means that it will likely bring $14.4 billion in profits. With sales increasing as production problems solved, this could easily become an oligopoly with huge sales and huge potential. And it's currently already partly reflected in the valuation. As such, uh, I personally have allocated a small point for Viking for me to stay on top of it, see what, see what and how things will play out. But in general, no Novos Nordis, LA Lili should all benefit as the obesity trends continues to trend higher and higher. At the present valuation and likelihood of success, Viking, um, if 
the data continues to show promising result will likely earn multiples of its current valuation. So I'll definitely be keeping my eye out on this space as I do see it as a game changer. Uh, as you can probably hear in the news about how the drugs on weight loss have actually helped uh, a lot of different chronic diseases. So the benefits definitely outweigh what is currently our summoning blocks. Um, I don't recommend recreational uses, but from a medical perspective, it does seem that this is the real deal. Um, so we'll definitely be looking out to see how it will perform in the future. All right, that's all I have. Um, for, you, for you on, on the weight loss phenomenon, uh, let me know what you think and whether or not you'll be jumping in um, in one of these stocks or in another company out there. Take care.